<laughs> Spoiler alert for eight months from now. <laughs> What is up? It is Friday. It is the start of another weekend vlog, if I end up doing it. <laughs> I wanted to update you guys. Um, I left some goals for myself at the end of the last vlog, and that had been to finish three books that I was actively reading. I have since finished two. I'd wanted to finish those three books by the end of this weekend, so I'm technically ahead of schedule, but I also started a new book. And I was already in the middle of another book that I didn't intend to finish this weekend. So let's just get into what it, those books are. We'll start with what I finished, which is The Notes. Uh, this is technically volume one, only because the previous one, Save Me, which is a webcomic that's free on Webtoons, uh, is technically zero. But that's the one you should start with if you are interested in the BTS alternate universe, which I'm sure some of you might be and a lot of, more of you won't be. <laughs> But this follows the boys and it's like their secondary life. So they're not in BTS, but they are friends. It is full of trigger warnings. There's like mass amounts of brutal things that happen. They have terribly neglectful parents. There's suicide. There is uh, pyromancy. There is um, alcohol problems. And it's just, it's just a whole mess. The alternate universe for BTS is brutal <laughs> to them, but I enjoyed it. This is obviously translated. Every time you get a new album, they have these things called notes in them, and it's a little piece of the story, but it's all in Korean, all in Hangul. So there isn't um, like an English translation when you purchase an album, and this is like the compilation of it. So it is translated and you can definitely tell it's translated. There's some, it's very jarring, the writing style itself. Um, I did, if I were to rate it, I'd give it, with my love in mind, four stars. And if I were to rate it more critically, it's like a two and a half, three star because the story, it just doesn't make any sense. Hello, say hello. Anyway, if I don't get out of my shot and he's trying to play with my tripod, the angle change, it's my baby's fault. In any case, um, this was a buddy read with Melanie over at Melt to the Any. We actually haven't discussed it actively. It's such a quick read. It could have been read in a day. I put it down to read Ninth House. I put it down to read Ninth House. So um, I then I finished it this week and we still have to talk about it. We both have very busy schedules, so it's <laughs> hard to buddy read. Um, but I can't wait to talk to her about it. So finish that. I also finished the audiobook of Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I had very, very high hopes for this. I ended up giving it a four star. It is not my favorite Taylor Jenkins Reid, but it is pretty good. Uh, it's about a girl that the plot diverges really early on into two different storylines. What happens if the main character, Hannah, goes home with her ex-boyfriend from high school, Ethan? They didn't end on bad terms, but they like left each other for college and kind of always wondered what would happen if they got together. So she leaves with him in one scenario and she doesn't leave with him in another. And it's how her life diverts in two different directions. And uh, every other chapter goes to the other storyline. And it was, it was cool. It was cool in the way that Taylor Jenkins Reid can really take characters and make you care about them and can really weave a story. But I said in last week's vlog that I felt like too much happened to Hannah for it to be believable. And I still stand by that. And I also think that how both timelines ended was too cheesy for my taste. Um, I am not a romantic. I am not, I maybe once was, I don't know if the world turned me cynical or I had kids and I don't like have enough energy anymore, but it, the story was incredibly romantic and um, it, it weighted very heavily on the idea that everything happens for a reason and you have one true soulmate and that kind of thing. And I just, it wasn't for me in that sense, but it was a good story and I really liked it. Uh, so I gave it a, it's a solid four star read for me, but it's just not my favorite. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo will likely never be topped for me. I just don't see it happening. And secondarily, um, what's it called that I really liked? Mm, one True Loves, which as I just explained of uh, being a non-romantic is kind of funny because it is a story about love, but 
those are my top two Taylor Jenkins Reads books and this did not outclass either of them but it was still a good read. So what am I actively reading right now? I am about halfway through End of Watch by Stephen King. This is the book that I hope to finish by the end of the weekend which seems very unlikely considering that's where I'm at at this point. I really thought I would but um, I've been focusing again more on my work in progress than this so reading has taken a second like a back burner and also my baby who used to take a two hour nap in the morning and then an hour nap in the afternoon has reduced to 45 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the afternoon i'm assuming it's just a developmental thing if it's not my reading is definitely going to be tremendously affected because i basically can only read a physical book when he's sleeping and at night i'm too tired to read much if at all so I really focus heavily on reading while I have my coffee in the morning before the kids are off to school um, and when he's napping. So the lack of that has really affected me, especially because I have to use that time on my work in prog progress because for the same reason, I'm too tired at the end of the day when the kids are in bed to focus on anything reading. Can't edit my own work if I can't focus. So long story short, halfway through this, I am almost 40% into Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I just watched Cody from Cody's Book Corner talk about this. I was really hoping Cody would love it because she kind of went into it with the same idea that I did, which is that like, we've seen really high ratings for it, five stars, or people that were like very wishy-washy about it. And because of my idea that I really liked Six of Crows, it was a total five star read, but I didn't care for Crooked Kingdom and I never finished the Grishaverse trilogy that maybe this would be up my alley, but it is moving incredibly slow. Um, I'm reading maybe a chapter a day at this point, so I don't expect to finish this in October as I'd initially wanted to because I have a lot of books coming out in November that I'm way more excited for and have been looking forward to. We've got Call Down the Hawk by, Mag Ooh, by Maggie Stipe Vader. Wow, I'm like Maggie Stipe Vader. Um, Stifotter, I don't know how to say it, um, and The Toll by Neil Shusterman, and then Space Boy Volume 5, I believe we're on, and what else do I have coming out? Ah, uh, Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nunn. I'm pretty sure she put on Twitter how to say her name, so now I gotta look that up. So we got a lot coming in November, and I have an idea for how I want to tackle, like, my active TBR for my November TBR which I'll do exactly the same as I did in October. It seemed to work for me anyway, in that I'd say like, here are the books that I'd like to read and um, I'll mood read within that and see what happens. Cause that led to me reading a lot of the books that I hoped to read, but also giving myself the opportunity to pick up different books from like the library and read those. And it, it worked. I've read a lot this month compared to past months, I think. We'll find out my wrap up, I'll pull it up and it'll be like the same 12 as always, but anyway. Ninth House, moving slowly, but the action scenes are always very, very cool. So I'm not at the point where I want to DNF it. Like when I DNF'd um, currently Gideon the Ninth, it was because I wasn't intrigued at all 110 pages in. I was more bored than anything and the, it was moving really slow. Whereas with this, with equally long passages, there are things that are really drawing me in. So that that's that. I can't tell you how far I'm into the next book, but this is the one I picked up uh, when I should just focus on finishing End of Watch. But I needed an audiobook after Maybe In Another Life was done, and I picked up Riley Sager's The Last Time I Lied. This is the last of the Riley Sager's currently published work that I need to read. And um, I started it this morning. I'm already on like part three of 10. I have a really hard time deciding, do I like Riley Sager's writing or do I not? I this is gonna be a weird gripe, but I feel like Riley, they write a very similar main character across all three books so far. And I don't know why that irks me so much. I'm pretty sure Riley is a man, but I don't know. So I don't look up authors unless it's like something that actively I like want to know more about them or they show up on my timeline. So. I don't know why it bothers me so much that their characters are all very similar. And I don't, I don't know, man. I, um, I really liked Final Girls. 
enough that I thought like I found a new thriller writer that I could rely on giving me good stuff and then I buddy read with my friend Jamie Reed's Lock Every Door this month and it was okay and so now I'm on this one and I'm feeling it's going to be more okay than good and I just don't know like I'm not giving up on Riley Sager if this is just okay because I'd rather ha have like a just okay author than never read their work again because the first one was good. Final Girls, Girls was good and maybe the next one will be just as good for that. But this is a story, I'm like ranting for no reason. This is a story about a girl who in her youth, I think she was 13, she went to the summer camp and the three other girls that she roomed with disappear. They go missing entirely and she wakes up in her cabin alone and all signs point to they intended to come back but she doesn't know where they went and so she's keeping some secret from her past that has to do with this disappearance and we're also in her current day life where she is an artist and she's a pretty successful artist but she's been asked by the camp owner who is a very rich woman to come back and be an art teacher in the camp that they have just reopened for the first time since the girls went missing. And so she's back, she's in the same room as she was when she was a camp attendee. And um, she thinks that she's going to find out more about what happened and hopefully find out the truth of what went down that summer. I'm, I like it so far, uh, I'm enjoying I, I want to know what happened. That's the core of it. That's what gets you through a thriller, right? But that said, I feel like just like Riley Sager writes very similar main characters, I feel like the side characters in the build all have started to feel the same to me. Um, and maybe that's why I lock every door. I partly didn't like it because it felt a lot like Final Girls in the setup. They're all very, very different books though. So we'll see how it works and whether Riley Sager can keep me on as a reader as they just announced their, or there was just a cover reveal for their next book, which comes out, I believe June or July of 2020. And it looks and sounds promising. So if Book of the Month Club drops it as one of their five picks, I'm sure they will. I'll be in on that. It will be my pick. Spoiler alert for eight months from now. <laughs> In any case, um, that's all I have right now. That's my update. I don't, I'm not starting anything else. Oh, I do actively have The Near Witch by Victoria Schwab. Um, I, I was listening to it on audiobook and my like fear is coming to fruition and that I do not really love V.E. Schwab's YA work. Middle grade, City of Ghosts and Tunnel of Bones, I like. A lot. Darker Shade of Magic trilogy is a solid four star trilogy for me and Vicious and Vengeful five stars. They're one of my favorite series hands down like top 10 but I didn't like the Savage Song and our dark duet. I haven't read the Dark Vault though I own it and then the Near Witch. This is the second time I've tried to start it and I just can't get into it. It's giving me Major Strange Grace vibes by Tessa Gratton. So if you like Strange Grace or Reverse, you like The Near Witch, I would try the other book. That said, Strange Grace is a book that I recently DNF'd. So I don't know about The Near Witch. That might just not be the time for me. I want to like it because I love Victoria Schwab. She's one of my favorite writers, uh, modern day. And I don't know. It was on my TBR for the month and I just don't think that I'll... Last time I tried to pick it up, which was I believe during the Owls in April, I was like, you know, I'm gonna put it off till fall. Maybe it'll feel more right at that time. And here it is. It's fall. It's October. It doesn't really get much more fall than now. And I'm not in interested in it. So I guess we'll see what happens there. But that's it for me. Um, that's my update right now. And I gotta get my kids off the bus in about 30 minutes. So I don't know, I might get some reading done if the baby takes a nap and the kids like just snack and chill for a little bit since it's the end of the week. So maybe, and I will update you later. And um, I hope you guys have a very good weekend, even though you'll see this after the weekend. So uh, future me hopes that your past weekend, wait, past me hopes that your past weekend is really good. <laughs> All right, bye. And we're back with more car chronicles. I literally have two neighbors that are out working on their cars.
One of my neighbors is like, I think he does car mechanics like out of his house because there's always people here with him and he's always like working on cars. <laughs> Super deductive. And he's directly behind me, so I'm making this quick. But he already thinks I'm a weirdo, so it's good. Writing update. Uh, not writing update, because how many of you actually care about the writing? Though that is where I'm going. I'm headed to Barnes & Noble because it's Sunday, which means that I'm going to get out of the house to, uh, to work on my work in progress, where the kids aren't here, because I don't get to do it on Saturdays since it's just me parenting three children, and that's a lot. And then Sunday, my husband's home, so he can stick with the kids, and I can get out of the house and refresh. So doing that, we'll see. I'll take you around Barnes & Noble if it's worth it. What I'm reading right now, End of Watch by Stephen King. I literally have so little left. It's like 10%-ish, if not less. And it'd be nice if I finish it at Barnes & Noble, but that's unlikely because I'm going to spend most of my time uh, reading my own writing. But my goal had been to finish that and two other books by the end of today, and I finished the other two books, so that's all I got, and I might actually do it, which is... I didn't expect it of myself, not because I um, don't believe in myself, but because it was on a tall order. So doing that, we'll see if there's any like sales that I am in, interested in at Barnes and Noble, but I don't know, there's not really any books. November 5th is where it's at. I got a bunch coming in then that I've pre-ordered. So there's that. Watched BTS's concert last night, so I had a good night and I didn't read at all, but here we are. It's, what an update. All right, the next update you'll see is probably a montage of me writing and all that jazz. NaNoWriMo is right around the corner. It's really scary. I'm not prepped at all, but I've been taking it day by day. So I don't think I'm going to write 50,000 words this NaNoWriMo just because I don't think that there's 50,000 words necessary to finish my story. So I don't know. I guess we'll find out. All right, that's it for me. I will update you soon. Okay, bye. to sneeze I think <laughs> quick update I have finished the third of three books that I wanted to read by the end of today and watch by Stephen King I gave it four stars the first two books were much better in my opinion the first book was the best book hands down the second book was okay like comparatively is four and a half five star I think I gave it a five star anyway um and this is a four star I can't go really into the plot without giving away the beginning of the trilogy so I won't really say much except that it's about the detective and the first story carries into the third story the second's kind of like a deviation from it but with the same characters more or less the end was relatively satisfying and I think that for the first time in my opinion King kind of wrapped up the story well and like what's dead may die and stay dead I don't know what I'm saying here but anyway uh I don't know the reason I didn't give it a full five stars is because it really lagged in the middle the first two books when I read them I read them in three or four days and I like thought about them and I couldn't put them down but this one kind of drug in the middle as it dragged <laughs> it just didn't hit the same way let's say that but I like the conclusion and I can't give you much more than that because it's the third of three so that's all I can say about that. But that's my three and three, three in the week that I intended to finish. I just put away the other one, so. That means that what I'd like to finish before October is out. So that gives me 
four more days is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. That is a stretch. I am less than 200 pages in, just barely, um, which is about 40%. And I was taking it a chapter today, but now I think I'm just going to focus solely on this as my physical read. That should help speed things up a little bit, but I don't know. It's kind of slow moving, so we'll see. And also I'm reading the books downstairs, but I'm listening to the audiobook of The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager, and I think I'm on part four of 10. So that has a way higher possibility of getting finished by November than Ninth House does, simply because audiobook I can listen to while I do chores and that kind of thing. So I have more opportunity to pick it up, whereas working around the kids and all that and naps and my own work in progress, this will take probably a little bit longer. So don't be surprised if you don't see this on my October wrap up, but it'll definitely at the very least be in my November wrap up because I don't plan on DNFing. So I was going to try and pick up another book before the month is out, but because of how long this is taking, I don't think that'll happen. So you basically have seen the last of the books that I'm going to read this month. And next month I have a specific theme outside of the books that I'll be getting um, pre-ordered for the fifth. Those don't fit the theme at all, but it's a way to try and tackle my ever-expanding TBR. My cart is a mess right now, but you can see that it is... Uh, there's a lot of books. That's a whole, that's a whole row right there. So, and there's still some downstairs that were on my list of possibilities or I got this month that are just sitting there waiting to be read. So look out for that uh, in November, or I guess it'll be probably this sometime this week. I probably will film Wednesday and have like a TBR and my uh, wrap up. Wow. Filmed Wednesday and then edited sometime soon after. So the TBR will come up first and then hopefully I can have the wrap up done and edited early next week. But that's it. I don't think I'm going to read anything else for the rest of the day. I'm going to take like a little mental break. It's been, if you can hear my kids in the background, it's been kind of a rough week with them. <sighs> Parenthood is not the easiest job in the world. But I got nothing else. Like that, I think I had a really good week and a good weekend. And funny story, I got, I was so excited and proud of myself. When I went to Barnes & Noble, my goal had been to finish reading my work in progress. And I got pretty far in and realized I don't think that a whole chunk of chapters i'm talking like eight to twelve chapters actually printed so i did finish what i printed in the binder but i was correct and a whole segment of things uh did not actually print it literally was just a page that said chapter one two three four five six seven eight because when i wrote i wrote in two parts so it's literally missing the whole second part <laughs> so i thought i had a whole lot less work to do than i did than i do because i needed to have it finished through the like the read through finished and um planning and outlining the gaps that I need to cross the bridges I need to cross to fill the gaps to finish this work in progress for NaNoWriMo and now I'm a little behind schedule so the next few days are going to be heavily focused on that and getting that prepared over reading which is why I'm not going to pick up anything new so the next you'll hear from me is going to be probably my TBR or if I do another weekend vlog whoo all right, guys, I hope that you have a wonderful week and that you had a great weekend and that you enjoy your Halloween if you celebrate it and you dress up really cool because I'm not going to do anything. It's supposed to snow here. So already, man. Okay, I'll see you later. Uh, like if you like this video, subscribe if you're new here and want to see more content from me. I post all uh, my social media links down below. You can find me on Goodreads, Instagram, and Twitter. I love you all so much and thank you for being here and thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.